So for years now, I have been trying to buy or build the best kayak crate that you could get. And I've been through several different brands. I've built a lot of DIY stuff over the years and they've all worked in a sense of they held my gear, but they never really met all of my needs. You know, they were really either really good at one thing and they sucked at another thing or vice versa. But anyway, this week I got my hands on a new box and I was able to modify and build it out to what I think I'm finally gonna be able to call the ultimate kayak fishing crate. And I can't wait to show you guys. Stick around. All right, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name's TJ. Welcome to Kayak USA. Before we get into the new box build, I am gonna hit on the live well because I know a lot of you guys that follow along are gonna ask, what happened to the live well? Where'd the live well go? Because last month, a couple weeks ago, I made a video where we installed this Hobie live well and then I did a follow-up video where we took it out, tested it out on the water, tried to use it to actually go crappie fishing. And that video was a huge fail because the live well actually just sucks. And that's why it's off the boat, but I'm not giving up on it yet. I've got some stuff ordered for it. I've got a few things already here, but I've got a few other things that I've got to get in. And then we're going to try to build this thing up to make it where it's actually worth what you pay for it because these things are extremely overpriced right out of the gate and they suck. So if you're interested in buying one of these, you may want to go watch my other two videos. Well, the install video was pretty simple, but the on the water after it was installed, just wasn't happy with it. A few things that we're gonna do to it is we're gonna extend it. I bought this hose. We're gonna extend the pump up to the top above the water so the water sprays down on top of it to keep the minnow alive. That'll do two things. That'll aerate the water, circulate the water, uh, and it will also keep the minnow from swimming up the current into the pump and just killing themselves. Like they were, I dug so many minnow out of this pump after we got back from that fishing trip and it stunk so bad. But, and that's another thing. This pump is, I think it's a T500 and it should be way stronger than that. Like the current is so weak that the minnow can just swim up the current into the blades of the pump. You know, if the blades weren't on, they could swim right around the blade and out. And also when you turn the pump off, if you don't reach in there and cap the pump off, it just drains right back out into the lake. This thing leaks like a sieve, not around any of the like bolt holes, but around the pump and around where you're supposed to be able to open the drain and close the drain, all the water just leaked back out into the lake. But anyway, we're not done with it, guys. I promise those of you that are interested in it, you know, there, there are people who's made this thing work, but I just feel like I shouldn't go through all this. I shouldn't have to buy a stronger pump and then re-engineer how this thing works, especially for the price. The price for these things is insane. I'm already getting upset. See how upset this thing's making me? We're gonna put it on the back burner. We're not done with it completely. We'll hop back on it maybe in a couple of weeks when maybe we'll put it on the banana boat and test it out on the banana boat. But today's video is about the new box build that I just did. I've been work I stayed up late last night because I got excited because things were kind of clicking as I was building this thing out and trying to figure out how I wanted things. And, and I, I love it. You can kind of see it on the back of the boat already, but I'm gonna grab the camera really quick and walk you guys through my tackle storage and how I built this, what I started off with, and let me know what you think about this thing. I'm super excited. For years and years, if you've been following the channel, you know that I have went through, I'm, I'm a DIY guy, so I'm always, building something new or trying to make something better for my kayak. I mean, you can look at it and tell that I, I, I'm a tinkerer. I like to tinker out in the garage and I like to build cool stuff. And this has been something that's been in the back of my mind for a long time now. I wanted like the ultimate kayak crate, something that I, you know, decided that I, I would permanently bolt this to my kayak. And we pro I probably will end up doing that where dr actually drilling the holes and bolting it so it don't have to strap down. That's how, happy I am with this build. But anyway, I'm gonna grab the camera so you can get an up close shot, show you how I built the inside out, what I've got on the outside. And if you wanna build one of these for yourself, I'm gonna have all of this stuff, everything I use today to make this crate the way it is in the video description below, or you can go to my kit.co page and I'll have this video linked there with all of the gear that I use. But let me grab the camera and show you what I built. 
So if this is the first video you've seen of mine, my tackle storage isn't just limited to this box that I'm showing you today. I've also got tackle storage here and uh, I carry like spinner baits and stuff that I can hang in this box. I kind of stuck that old Plano box down in there and I'm able to use that for spinner baits and buzz baits. But I've also got tackle storage under the seat. Like look at all this storage I got right here. And I'm able to just kind of cut my lures. It's kind of a mess in there right now, but you see I've got a ton of jerk baits and square bills and top water baits. And that's all just in these two drawers up under my feet. I've got a full video on this. If you're interested in it, this is a Dewalt T-Stack system that I installed on the seat. I'll put the video link right here. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out. But I've got this storage already for tackles. So when you see what I've done to this box, you're not gonna be like, I don't want you to think, man, you wasted all this extra space where you could be putting more tackle boxes. Just keep in mind, I got a ton of tackle already right here at my, you know, easy access. This is actually easier to get to than turning around and getting it out of the back. But I've got that T-Stack system, but here is the box I built. Now I started off with the Yak Attack. You can kind of see, well, you can't really see the name down in there, but it's a Yak Attack 16 by 16. I've actually got the box still in the floor here, but it is the Black Pack 16 by 16. This is a big boy and it comes with all the rod holders you see here. I think it's what, four, five, six rod holders, and it is nice, guys. I mean, you put it together yourself. It don't take long to put together. The instructions were really well. You add your clips, and you can kind of build it how you want it, and that's why I wanted to go with it, because I knew I was gonna be drilling into it. I knew I was gonna be changing it up, and you can put the handles where you want them. You can put the hinges where you want them. You can make it exactly how you want it for your boat. You can put your rod tubes anywhere on this thing you want to. It's kind of almost like a plastic molly panel style. And that's another thing I like about it right there. It is made in the USA. But here is what the inside of mine looks like. And then we're gonna jump to the outside. The inside, as you can see, holds my 36 volt Newport lithium battery right inside here. As you can see, I've got my wire runs right in here. It goes around in here. The battery is actually strapped down to the crate. It's in its own little foam area. And I've still got room for three large Plano boxes. I don't have anything in here right now because like I said, I just put this together. Let me see if I can turn the camera a little bit. I'd like to show you how big this actually is. This is my hand in this box. It, it is a big box. So I've got three storage containers there. And if I wanted to, I could even add some, you know, one on the top right here if I wanted to, or two, you know, across the top if I needed to. But I don't think I'm gonna need to. I've got the battery in here, I've got the storage in here. That's plenty of tackle right there on the inside, because as you can see, when you shut it, first of all, the latches are awesome. You can flip them down and they lock in a down position. Or when you go up, you latch it in place and it cannot come open unless you push this little lever down and pull back on the clip. This thing is nice, I really like this box. And it comes with all these tie down points that you can kind of put anywhere you want. As you can see, I put a handle here and it's got a built in slot for a strap and I've got the strap going down and it's actually wrapped around my boondock trail. You can kind of see it right there. But yeah, that, it, the box is awesome. But as you can see, I had enough room to incorporate tackle storage on the outside. Now all of this is, all this is, is, one of these guys right here. I got one off. And if you're not familiar with my channel, I used to have these hanging on my H rail on the side. And I've actually got a YouTube short on me making you know some of these and hanging them off the side of my boat to hold these little Plano boxes like this. Now, if you don't know what this is, you can get them on Amazon and I will have it linked below. But if you've got a Hobie with this square center hatch, odds are if you bought it new, you got one of these already because that's what this was. This used to, it, this come in the Hobie factory and when you open that lid, it would kick up and you'd have your two little boxes. What most people do, the very first mod to a Hobie that people do is they take this out and it goes in the floor or the trash or the shop somewhere and they buy the old bucket mod, this thing right here, and it drops right down in there so you can haul more tackle. Everybody does that mod first, but that means that there's a lot of people with Hobies out there with this plastic piece right here just laying in their shop somewhere and they're not using when they could be using them to do something like this. 
This is absolutely amazing. All of my go-to tackle that's not, you know, in my T-Stack box is located in these waterproof boxes. Like I've got the terminal tackle here. I've got, what is that? That is uh, chatter baits, I think, spinner baits in that box. But anyway, I keep my tackle on the outside of the crate and I even took a piece of this bungee and I used some of the holes that were already here. Now these holes don't go all the way through. I know it looks like there's a ton of holes in this box, but they're actually, they don't go all the way through. You have to drill them through. So this is the backside of those holes. And if you see like these holes are actually not even there on this side. And it's so you can mount stuff in here on the inside of the crate. And these are so you can mount stuff on the outside of the crate. And if you use short enough screws, you don't even have to go all the way through the box. So what I did here was I took a piece of this bungee and I drilled through this hole and through this hole. And you can kind of see on the other side. And then I just tied knots right there so that it don't pull back out. And what you are left with is a bungee strap that you can come down and actually secure your tackle boxes. And I, I'm gonna be you know, okay with driving down the highway with this. I'm not gonna worry about you know, losing these tackle boxes going down the highway. I really think that these are gonna hold it pretty secure. And all I did to mount these on the side of the box was I took three short screws right here and just I lined them up with the holes. You know, I had to make sure that it fit because you, as you can see, this is a kind of a perfect fit. You see where this is touching the wall right here in the Hobie. And I'll show you this side too. This is just barely touching the wall right there in the Hobie. So this is actually a perfect build. And that's why I was so excited last night when I was out here doing it because everything was falling into place just right. And the, the build was, you know, at, you know, doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Let me stick this out of the way. But yeah, so I just, all I did was bolt them on with three screws. The screws don't even go all the way through. It's the short ones that, you know, they just fill up these holes right here and they lock down and it's bolted on really good. My little thing right here is actually off the kayak. And if you can see the backside of it, it's just, I've got a, can you see it? There's a the little head right there. It's just a little uh, Allen head bolt that I had, a little mushroom head bolt. And it comes out of the front of this little peg. And then I got a nylon uh, nut on this side that I was able to tighten down so that it don't come off, but it's also not in the way of anything. I can throw my boxes in there and then strap her down. These little things right here, let me see if I can find one on the boat somewhere. They're already on your kayak if you have a Hobie. Here's one right here. I, it's just these little things I took off the boat. There used to be one right here and they're like guides for your, uh, what is it called? Your anchor trolley system on the side of your kayak. Let's see if there's any on this side. No, I've already removed them all off this side and used them somewhere else, but there used to be one right here. And they're just little guides that guide your anchor trolley or your, you know, your cable up and down the side of the kayak. And I was able to just bolt them on and they work perfect for grabbing that strap and locking my boxes on the side. So anyway, that was the mod that I did. Now, if you move to the back, this is actually set up different than it would be if you put it together the way it was meant to be put together. Let's see if there's a picture on this box. Let's see, there kind of is. Let's see if I can show you this on camera. So if you look at this picture, the way they got this set up, you see, first of all, they got the rod tubes really high off the side of the crate, but the, they got the rod tubes on each side. So they got three on this side, three on this side. You can see the kayakers here, so he can turn around and open it up. And you do that because you want the lid to be able to open all the way. If these were mounted directly to the side of the box, back here where I mounted them, then you would not be able to open up this lid and the hinges would hinder you. You'd only be able to put two here and the rods would end up being too close and you would only be able to open your top about, probably about this much before it would actually hit your rods. And I didn't want to deal with that. So I took some starboard or boat board, some of this black stuff right here that you can get on Amazon. It's just like cutting board. And I cut me two pieces 
and I spaced them off of the boat, I mean off the box. Let's see if you can kind of see. You see these spacers I got? These are three quarter inch little nylon spacers that I had. Don't even know where I got them. I think they're, believe it or not, I think these uh, came in a TV mount box. You know when you get one of those wall mounts for your TV and you got this whole package of different things that you could use to mount the TV? I think that's what these are. But anyway, I had uh, four or eight of them and let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I've got four on each side. So I've got eight of these and I was able to boat, bolt this uh, boat board to the back, which steps it off of this wall. And then I use the boat board. As you can see here, I've got a piece going across the top, piece going across the bottom. And I was able to bolt the rod tube straight to it. So all this is solid. This is not going anywhere. I don't know if you can see my bolts from the inside because of my battery. Yeah, you can see this one here. See here, I've got a nylon nut and a washer, and I just went through one of the existing holes. Now, I did take a Dremel, and as you can see, there's no line here or piece of plastic that comes up through here like this anymore because I did open that up so that I could fit that washer and that nut in there. But there's four of those going down each side. This bad boy is not going anywhere. <laughs> And I've got it strapped on with Yak Attack's uh, cam straps, I believe that's what they're called. I got a couple of these off their website. And then I've got my one of my other ones that I had here holding the front down. And it worked out great. I've got the wire. You're not going to be able to see it, really. You can kind of see it running through the crate. That's my Newport Vessels motor wire that just runs in there to the battery. It's sealed. And it's kind of watertight. I'm not, you know, really worried about water getting in here, but I did kind of seal up every little hole that I drilled and I used rubber washers where I could just to make sure that, you know, I, I didn't want to just drill holes and leave them open. So it is sealed up to a certain extent, but I wasn't overly worried or concerned about, you know, water getting in it. And the wire just comes out of there, runs straight back here to my new NK300. If you did not see this motor install, I'm going to link it right there. You need to go check out that motor install because I went over all the specs of this motor and it's insane. Uh, cannot wait to share the on the water video with you guys. It's coming soon, so y'all stay tuned. We just did that install last week, so y'all hadn't got to see it on the water yet, but it is awesome. But yeah, I think this is gonna be the ultimate kite fishing crate, guys. I mean, if you didn't have a motor, you wouldn't have to use all that space for that battery right there, which I'm glad I did because now I have nothing else back here. If you remember, if you follow the channel, you know that I had a battery box here and then I had the live well here and I had these storage bins hanging off the side of the live well and all of this was just, it looks so cluttered back there. But now look, look how clean and sleek this looks. I've got my catch bump board here, my yak attack box there. Everything is nice and clean. It's gonna be very accessible. I'll be able to haul five rods. Really, I'm gonna use this one here. Let's see if I can grab it over the kayak. Yeah. So I also ordered me a new net. Let's see if I can hold the camera and show you all this net. Check this thing out. So it flips out like that. I don't know if y'all can even see what I'm holding right now, but check this out and then it folds up. But what I'm gonna do with it is keep it folded like this, and it's gonna stow right on the side of my boat, just like that. So I can spin around, grab it, and flip it out. They've got one that's more narrow too. I'm almost regretting not getting the more narrow one, but I'm gonna try this one out. I think it's, I don't think it's gonna be too big, you know, especially for the hogs that I catch. They're, they're gonna fold up in that thing anyway. <laughs> I'm just joking, y'all know I'm lying if you watch my channel at all. But I think it's gonna work great. I'm still gonna have plenty of space for rods back here in the back. I'm even gonna use the other tube for, if I only take four or five rods with me, let's see if I can do this with one hand. But I'm also gonna use this one for my light or whatever you wanna call that, my yak attack pole. It's got my flag on the top of it and I'll still be able to have one rod up here beside me and four of them back there behind me. And yeah, I like that thing a lot, guys. What do y'all think about this box? 16 by 16, they've got different sizes, like if this is too big for your boat and you wanted to do these mods like I did, uh, you can get, I think they've got like an eight by eight maybe or a 10 by 10. I'll have it linked below and you can go check out 
their website and see for yourself and then you know do the measurements on the boat that you got and see if it'll work but this thing's solid i can't wait to get on the water and use it thinking about uh i've got me some marine mat left i'm thinking about cutting my own marine mat piece to go here and uh routing out my logo in it but i don't know it looks good as it is so Still, I may not even touch it. I may just leave it as is and rock on with it like that. Before I end the video, I do want to give a huge shout out to my channel members. I really appreciate the support, guys. I haven't forgotten about you. I am putting together something really cool. I think it's going to be neat for you guys. So y'all stay tuned. I really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you're not a member and you want to become one, you can click that join button up under my videos. You join, it's $4.99 a month. It just helps support the channel. It helps me you know, be able to get camera equipment and stuff like that to actually film these adventures or these DIY videos for you guys. And it's five bucks a month. It's really cool, for, you know, for you guys to support me the way you do. I really appreciate all of the support. And I'm going to try to put together some like custom members only content for you guys very soon. I've been working on that. I hadn't, you know, it's been on the back burner for a little while, but I'm getting to where I've got more time now to actually dedicate some members only content so stick around for that if you want to join i really appreciate it if you did you can hit that join button or just hit the subscribe button you know if you're not subscribed and you watch my videos if you've seen them there's a huge number like my videos even the ones that get hundreds of thousands of views if you look at the percentage of the people who are subscribed it's always just a very little bit like i always get all of these views on my videos but the, the percentage is just like so small of the people who are actually subscribed. If all of you guys were subscribed, this channel would be booming right now. I mean, I, it, it is doing great. I'm proud of it the way, you know, the way we're growing. I really appreciate all the support. But if you're not subscribed and you like this content, guys, subscribe. If you want to support me, you can buy my merch. I've got some cool shirts, some hats, some hoodies, some cool stuff. All of that is always linked right up under the videos. You can click it and go check them out. I appreciate it, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about this box. Uh, if you've done something like this already, send me some pictures or tag me on Instagram, at KayakUSA on Instagram. If you're not following me there, go follow me there. Usually when I'm filming videos like this, I will upload as I'm filming, you know, way before it comes out on YouTube, I will upload, you know, little sneak peeks and video clips and stuff like that over on my Instagram account. So you get a little kind of behind the scenes or you know what videos are coming up next if you follow me there. So go follow me there. Tag me in pictures if you got some cool content or cool DIY stuff. I'd love to check it out. I appreciate you guys watching and I will catch you next Monday at six o'clock. Peace.